I want to get married. Yeah. I want to give birth to two to three cute babies. Wow. <laughs> Hello, it's Hazel. And I'm Jermaine. And welcome back to another episode of Cleverty's Hush Podcast. Today, we have a big hole in our heart. Yeah. And a big hole here. Between in- us. <laughs> <laughs> Between us. Because Azura is unfortunately under the weather. So mm. it's just going to be us. I don't think we've done an episode just us. Right. Back in season one. No, I think there was one episode. But I think Azura was on the computer or something. Really? Maybe. I'm not sure. But it's been a while, basically. Mm. This is season forever. So, right. yes. We are going to be talking about singlehood. Singlehood. Mm. As in being single, living single. What is that like? I mean, we've talked about relationships. We've talked about intimacy. But let's talk about the flip side of it today. Um, and the good, the bad, the ugly of being single. Do you think there's more good, more bad or more ugly? I do think that at different stages of your life, you need different things. But everyone should be single at least once. But actually, we're single growing up. You know what I mean? But it's like, mm. once we have stepped into a relationship, yes. I feel like it's so hard to be single again. I completely agree. Because you jump from relationship to relationship uh-huh. and you don't really know how to be by yourself. And that's what happened to me. But do I like being single? No, but I needed it. I think that's going to be my answer also. Right? I don't like being single, but I need this space. Mm. So, is it normal to like be single? Especially at this phase of our lives, right? So many of my friends are getting married. They have children. Yeah. Some of them even have like three children at this point already. I'm like, what, 29 years old. Okay. And I'm like, gosh, I'm still here like working hard on my career, man. I mean, everyone has different priorities, uh-huh. right? Don't make yourself feel bad just because that's what everyone else is doing. In fact, according to the Pew Research Centre, more people than ever are actually single. Mm. Even though it seems like everyone is getting married, nearly 40% of adults in the US are single which is up from 29% just about like 40 years ago. Right. Mm. And this is in the US. What about in our local context? So in Singapore, according to the National Population and Talent Division survey, about 50% of 2,848 Singaporean singles surveyed are not dating. No, even not married. They're not yeah. even dating. Yeah. They're like single, single. Correct. But um, 80% of them said that, uh, you know, they intend to get married mm-hmm. and they are aged between 21 to 35. But this number has been on a downward trend. Yep. Why do people not just want to get married anymore? I don't know. I think getting married is a whole other thing. Some people don't even want to date. Right. Right. And I think there's a few reasons why, you know, my friends who don't date, um, I've seen that, you know, they get very tired of even dating. Like, they have been on dating apps. They have been on every kind of dating app for year after year. That's why it's tiring. Yeah, and they're just sick of going on dates, you know, meeting, like, assholes that just want (laughs) to... No, they're just DTF. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Um, Or or maybe they just keep a very small social circle. Don't really go out. Where would you meet someone if you don't really go out and you don't like dating apps? I feel like there's a high chance you might meet someone in your workspace because that's where you go every single day, right? But it's kind of weird to date in your workspace, right? But I find like in the same workspace, maybe you might find someone who understands you a bit better. True, that's true, yeah. Compared to a friend of a friend, for example. But it's not everyone who gets to find someone suitable for him or her in a workspace. Yeah, exactly. Um, Some people just have different priorities, like wanting mm-hmm. to concentrate on their studies at the moment. Mm-hmm. Because being in a relationship, it takes a lot of time, And commitment. Effort, yeah, and mm. money. Yes. Right? And like, you might not have that as a student who's just trying to support yourself and trying to get like your A grades or something. Right. I fully agree. Yeah. And a lot of my friends, they actually prefer to leave dating to chance. Okay, oh. you know like in Chinese New Year, a period when your relatives ask you, when are you getting girlfriend? Sui yuan. Sui yuan. Yeah, as they okay. call it. Living it up to fate because what, they what believe... Is living up to fate? Like you're going to walk... up to fate. Like you're going to walk into someone on the street and they're like, wow, so cute. Yeah. Like Korean drama. Like in the K-dramas. Oh exactly. my gosh. <laughs> but I agree. Like I wouldn't hop on a dating app yeah. in hopes of finding someone. I feel like that person then for me will be right in front of my eyes one oh, fine day. Wow. Mm. Okay. So you... But but your eyes must be clear. La. Yeah, la, it must you, be like open yeah, white. What la. if you miss or something like that? You <laughs> never know, right? Um, there are other alternate priorities apart from just romance mm-hmm. in life, right? Or getting married, having a family. Some people don't even have that at the front of right. their mind. I think some reasons that people want to uh, really stay single. Um, one of this is actually something quite noble and very not very talked about, which is you have to care for your family. 
Mm. If let's say you have someone in the family who needs a full-time caregiver, how are you going to do that and have a relationship at the same time? Right. It's very hard for your partner to understand. That as is well. a really huge commitment. Mm. And honestly, if I were in their shoes, I don't know if I would be able to like execute that position perfectly. So yeah. really kudos to all the people out there who are, you know, um, adopting such a role in the family. Mm. Some mm. people also see that same satisfaction in being single, where like romance or being in a relationship doesn't give them, um, how do you say, like the, what what they need in life. Mm-hmm. They, like what? Uh? Like, <laughs> like some people, okay, for example, some people want to be in a relationship because they want sex. Right. But let's say if you're, you're asexual, for example, right, uh-huh. and you don't really need sex or you're not open to sex, you don't want sex in your life, then why would you need to have a partner for right. that. Right. Mm. And as we mentioned in previous episodes, there are certain people who enjoy going out with different people every single night. Yeah. Like they see them for one time and that's it. Oh. They don't want that commitment. Okay, okay. That time given to the other party. Yeah. They just want to have fun and go. Maybe that's why they feel like they're not ready to settle down just yet. So let's talk about what we like about being single. Ooh. I love the extra time that I have. I find that okay. when I'm single, right, yeah. I actually spend more time on my friends and family. True. Right. True. It's like, I just have so many things on my mind that I want someone to talk about. Yeah. So I will automatically go to my friends and my family. But if I have a partner, for example, then maybe I will like, just tell him what I feel. Mm. And then less time for friends and family. I do think um, time spent with your partner and time spent with your friends, usually when I'm in a relationship... Um, sorry to my friends, but I kind of neglect them a little oh, bit. Especially in the first... Understandable. No, in the like honeymoon stage. Correct, you know, correct, you just want to be with your partner. And then unfortunately, if I have like a free weekend, what am I going to choose? Being my partner or being my friend? But I feel like you're the kind of girl who would bring your partner to see your friends. Oh, so that's true. Yeah. Everybody, Kill two birds with one stone. Correct. Yeah. Spend one good night together. Co- oh. Um, hey. <laughs> over uh, food over and food drinks. And drinks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Correct, correct. Uh, but I also do feel that the biggest word that comes up to me is freedom. Oh. Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you don't have to answer to anybody. I don't have to text anyone goodnight. I don't have to tell you if I go out like, you know, that I'm home, I'm safe. Because mm. you're not responsible to anyone correct. but yourself. But I have found that because of that and the freedom, I tend to make very stupid decisions. Mm-hmm. So very happy for you now, Jimmy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's hear from some of our harsh listeners. Yeah. Um, what did they like about being single? Some of them are single now. Some of them used to be single. Mm-hmm. Um, Kelly says, more freedom to do anything. See, freedom. Right. That's the thing, right? Yeah, and um, Ng Wei says, no need to live up to the society expectations. Wah. Wah, very Wah. deep. Ah. Wah. Like, what kind of expectations? Ng Wei, ah? very, very... <laughs> I think expectation to... Um, um, be married, have a kid, uh, da, 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 da. the Singaporean route, yeah. BTO. Okay, Nicolette okay. says, I have a lot of time to myself, I can save money, and it's just me, my dog, and I. Ah, oh, right? that's so nice. Yeah. This other person says, there's no need to worry about living up to expectations after a failed marriage. Oh gosh. Oh man. I mean, it is a risk. Yeah, um, yeah. I think any relationship that you get into, breaking up is risk. Marriage, you know, divorce mm. is a risk. Another male listener, Reno, says, your happiness depends on you, not on others. And no expectations means no disappointments. Mm. To be fair, I feel like this is applicable even though you're in a relationship. Yeah. I mean, who says that your happiness depends on your partner even if you're attached, right? That is yeah. true, yeah. I think even if you're in a relationship, you should make sure that you're dependent on yourself mm-hmm. for your own happiness. Um, 17 March says, it's liberating to not have to answer to anybody except my own mother. Oh, yeah. I love that. How come you never include your father? <laughs> I don't know why she never include her father. But can I read to you, because we were talking about dating apps, right? Correct. Let me just segue for a bit. Um, speaking of 17 March, mm-hmm. she's on a lot of dating apps. Right. 17 okay. March is Jimmy's good friend, yeah, by the way. Yeah, so she's on a lot of dating apps. She's like the ultimate single... Okay. single lady, right? Um, you know of this app called Hinge? Yeah, I haven't been on Hinge okay, but okay, I've okay. heard of it. So apparently Hinge, you can put um, descriptions uh-huh. on your dating profiles. This guy put, I'm convinced that I was a 6 but due to inflation, I became a 10. The one thing you should know about me is I can cook and I can remove your makeup for you. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's like quite that. cute, right? I, like that. I think it's quite cute. Someone put, I'll fall for you if you push me over. I I mean Please kudos, tell me she went for the second one. Kudos for no <laughs> I mean, kudos for you know creativity. Mm. This is why some people uh, stay away from dating apps because it's like what was that? <laughs> yeah. 
But it's a good platform to get to meet more people and get to understand uh, more on what you like and what you don't like. Mm. Um, I like Grey Grace's uh, comment, no betrayal. Oh. A bit dark. Uh. But it's true. Yeah. But your friends can betray you too, Grey. Hey, hey, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Anyone can betray you in your life. But on the other hand, I feel like being single... Mm, makes me feel a little empty sometimes. Oh. Yeah, like I mentioned, after a full day of work, I have um, so many thoughts in my mind and mm. I, I would really like to share my feelings with someone. And then you find that you have no one to go to. That was the biggest thing when I broke up with my ex was, obviously, you know, you can talk to your friends, Correct. you can talk to your family, but I maintain that it's not the same mm. having a partner that you can just pour out everything to. Unfiltered Unfiltered, yeah. yeah. So I did feel quite lonely, you know, in those first few weeks where firstly, I came home to no one. I had no one to text. And yeah, it was a bit of an adjustment Mm. for sure. Mm. But after that, I kind of just fell into it and I did enjoy being single. Of course, also has a good side. For example, you get to save a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You get to save a lot of time. You get to enjoy more things on your own. That's yeah. true, yeah. I feel like a lot of my friends who are single, they really use this opportunity to travel alone. Oh. Yeah, and that's such a great idea for you to understand yourself better. Yeah, I right? feel like it, if you're, I mean, if you're in a relationship, yes, you can travel mm-hmm. alone. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you only have a few like annual leave days a year, right. you would want to utilize that and, you know, spend some time mm-hmm. with your partner overseas, right? Mm-hmm. I think the whole concept of being single is just, or being happily single it's just something that society has not fully accepted, right? You think? Because, really? Because, like, let's say I, I tell you, right, like, at my age, let's say I tell you, oh, you know, I've actually been single 28 years of my life. Mm-hmm. Usually, the reaction would be like, what? <gasps> yeah. yeah! Evergreen? Yeah, evergreen, evergreen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? The reaction would be like, oh, like, what's wrong with you? Kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Do you think this is the society's expectation of people? Yeah. I don't know. I have a friend who is um, 50 this year. Mm. She she has dated a few people, of course, but she is still unmarried. Mm. She's single. Why? She cares a lot about her family. Um, Maybe because she feels like she hasn't met the one yet. But oh. she's in no rush. That's the thing. She's okay to just go out, meet new people, and then just come home to her family. That's cool at 50 years old. Yeah, that's really cool. I don't know if we can do that. eh. I mean, Mm. we see how. Yeah, we see how. Yeah, we check back in 21 years. I have 21 years to go. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. I think being happily single is something that if you find it works for you, Mm. just because not everyone is happily single. Right. Yeah, maybe Mm. maybe you just want to be alone. It can be a very fulfilling life, a very meaningful life as well. Mm. I like one of our PD's stories. Um, she says she's always viewed romantic relationships as a luxury oh. rather than a necessity. Okay. I, I, I fully love that. So if you're involved in the relationship when it comes, then sure, embrace it. Um, Which one? This must be PDF. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> PDF. PDF. <Not> JPEG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PDF. Correct. So she could never understand how there are people who make it their life's goal to be partnered up. PDF has been single for 25 years. She's only recently found her partner. Yeah. So happy for her. No, th- so when she told me uh-huh. she'd been single, she's evergreen, right? Right. A little part of me was like, why? Uh? Yeah. What? You know like, what I mean? You're such like, an outgoing person. Yeah. How come we haven't met someone who can vibe with you? In exactly, that way, exactly. Right? And and she meets so many people, you know, she has so many mm. friends. But I think it was a conscious effort on her part not to give and open her heart to someone that maybe did not deserve it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And I think it's safe to say that PDF is in the honeymoon phase for now. But she still says that, <laughs> you know, there is nothing bad or wrong about singlehood. Yeah. In fact, singles should take it as an opportunity to really do whatever they want in life because the only person they have to care about is themselves. Oh, I like that. So I think PDF struggles with depending on someone apart from herself because she's been single for 25 years. Ah. So, you know, finding a partner now and then having to try and trust them and put a little bit of that faith and dependency on them is something new for her. Mm. Mm. But it's one step that she has to take because now that she's in a relationship, it takes two hands to clap. You have to learn to trust the other person for this relationship to work out. Mm, absolutely. Mm. PDN says, I loved being single. I had no problems being single. Nice. I got my own money. I got my own time. But, you know, as I approached my mid-20s, I mm-hmm. felt a desire to kind of have a family. Aww. right? And it takes two hands to clap to have a family. Mm. So eventually, she found some, you know, um, some lucky la, to have a family with. <laughs> no, la, but she's, she loves this guy, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Have a, has a family now, you know, mm. a little little baby. Oh, with, so cute. Yeah, yeah, a mm. little family uh, unit. She says, was I happier single? I can't exactly say so, 
but I'm happy today too. It's just a different kind of happiness. Yeah, every time she speaks about her daughter, I can see that glow and that yeah. love in her eyes. Aww. And I really adore that. Really? Mm, where, yeah. Where? Wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she looks tired. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's a different kind of fulfillment in your life, right? For when sure. When you're single, when you're not single, mm. yeah. So to our listeners out there, whether you are single by choice or not, um, there's absolutely no shame in that, okay? Mm. After all, there are many advantages to being single. So first one, did you know that more people who are single actually do more exercise? Yeah. Why? Whenever my exes break out with me, right, they suddenly get very skinny. Correct. I don't know why. And very fit. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about you. <laughs> no, it's true. Like, the strange thing is, during the whole relationship, you would think you when you want to keep a girl, you would keep fit. Correct. But they refuse to. But the moment that I'm gone, mm. they're like, oh shit, I'm on the market now. Mm. I need to put more effort into my looks. Yeah. Then they drop like 15 kg in like two months. Yes, when you're single, you have more time to go workout classes, right. more time to take care of yourself. Mm. And um, I guess you have better health overall. Really, really, yeah. really. So a variety of studies have looked at the impacts marriage and singlehood can have on health. Mm. Um, in a study conducted in 2006, uh, rates of heart disease were lowest amongst individuals who had never been married. Say what? So marriage... Now? causes you so much stress that is that what they're trying to no, say? No, here's what I think. Yeah. So after you get married, right? Yeah. You get kids. And then once you get kids, right? Oh, your everyday life uh, ah. becomes like a routine. You have to take care of the kids. And okay. then uh, so shack, right? So whenever you get pockets of time, you just don't care. You just want to eat whatever makes you happy. You snack. You okay. cut down on the exercise because you have no time. Because your kids are a priority. Your family is a priority. And then you take a back seat. Right. Yeah. So, Actually, that's one of my biggest fears. Of, you know, being in a relationship, being um, married. and That your health would take a backseat? That m- me, myself, would mm. take a backseat. I mean, I, I do think in a relationship, um, you should still take care of your health. In fact, For sure. the both of you should make a commitment to care about each other's health in terms of what you eat, mm. in terms of working out together, maybe. Mm. I think it's possible. Right. That's why a lot of couples, they do a lot of um, couple workout oh. together. That's a good way oh. to bond. And like also, sex. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that too, hey, Jimmy. How, how many calories does it burn? Women burn an average of 69 calories per minute during 69 sex. 69? Ca- really? Wow, 69. 69 calories. Mm. Hmm. Okay. I've once um, seen an article saying that by French kissing your partner, I don't Why know must why. It be yeah, French must be kissing, French kissing. Though. The normal kissing cannot. Maybe because your tongue exerts some energy. <laughs> la. You burn 26 calories. But I don't believe it. 26 calories is a lot, you know. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm running on a treadmill. It takes quite long to hit 26 Correct. calories. Being single uh-huh. also means, very strangely, less housework um, for women. It's a very strange statistic. Remember what we talked about? Mental load? Mental load, yes. yes. Women always want to... Um, uh, carry the burden of the household chores because yeah. they feel like the men can never do it as well as they can. I wouldn't say the men can never do it. Like, I, I... Okay, well, I don't really do household chores. But if my man, like, throws his clothes everywhere, I will gladly, you know, pick it up. Mm. Because I just feel like, I, yeah, I want it to be neat and I don't really care that you throw it around. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it's not like a mental load I'm taking on, but it piles up at the end of the day, I guess. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, apparently, uh, according to a 2008 study... Getting married means an extra seven hours a week of housework for women. Yeah. And then for men, one hour less of huh? housework. Yeah. So this is how women, so. you know, that you should let it go. Let it go. If you don't like to clean the house, don't get married. No. <laughs> and, make your husband do it. Uh, <laughs> and then if he does a shitty job, right? Mm, just grit your teeth and bear with it. Actually... You know what's funny? Um, you know Vernon, right? Yeah. So Vernon's married to Jane. Uh-huh. And in all their years of marriage, um, from what I know, Vernon genuinely enjoys doing housework. That's good. Yeah, Find a husband bought, like Vernon. He, he buys the best Dyson vacuum cleaner uh-huh. every year just because he loves vacuuming. What do you mean? He buys one vacuum cleaner every year? Like whatever is the newest one, oh. he'll buy it. <gasps> because he loves cleaning the house so much that he will invest in it. Wow. And and yeah, he, he just genuinely likes it. So so yeah, beat the statistic. Get yourself a Vernon. <laughs> yeah. Let's go! <laughs> okay, stronger social connections. This is oh. also one perk. Why? So, uh, being alone is not the same thing as being lonely. Yeah. I really love this phrase. Single people can be more conscious of avoiding feelings of isolation mm-hmm. and maintaining stronger connections to friends and family as a result. You don't want to eat alone, for example, maybe. Then you just throw your mother out to eat with you or oh. your friends. 
So this is how you build like a stronger social connection, as right. we mentioned just now. It's like that one Valentine's Day that I told you about where mm-hmm. I was single, then right. my parents drove me out to eat. Ayo. Strong family connection. Yeah. So you were third willing lah. Yeah, yeah. They pitied me, but it, <laughs> I but I have stronger social connections. <laughs> yeah. Good. You also have less debt, surprisingly. I feel like um, this is very true in the case of Singapore. But debt, if you're I mean, don't get into a relationship and then overspend beyond your means and then end up in debt, right? Not really so much of a relationship, but in terms of marriage. Oh, so once oh. you get married, you have a house, you have mortgage, you have children. Wow. This is where all the cost can really come in. Mm. So apart from being in marriage and um, having kids, right? I feel like couples also tend to spend more money on each other. Especially oh. when it comes to occasions. Valentine's Day, anniversaries, birthdays. You set up your romantic candlelight dinner. You buy expensive gifts for each other, right? Which are things that you wouldn't do if you're single. That is true. I mm. mean, not necessarily... Um, that you have to spend so much money when you're in a relationship. I think uh, that's just what people think is the right thing to do. And then they end up in debt. Or they end up, you know, mm. being very broke. Mm. Yeah, because they spend beyond their means in a relationship. About 21% of single people had credit card debt compared to 27% of married couples without children who had credit card debt. Mm. Mm. So just last year, a financial advisor told me, you know how much it costs to raise a child in Singapore? $285,000. That's how much it costs. For how many years? Maybe from when they're young all the way to uni. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and this is with all the grants that the, the government yeah, is giving yeah, us. Yeah. Uh, and that is when GST is used 7%. Okay, so plus one more percent. Yeah. It's like probably $300,000 to yeah. raise a child. Yeah. Okay, I'm the child. I, <laughs> let me raise myself first before I think about that. But that's, that's really crazy. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of considerations um, when it comes to thinking about being married, starting a family. Some people just, there's nothing wrong with, you want to go your whole life just spending money on yourself. What's wrong with that? Yeah, but as we say that, there's still a lot of stigma around people who are single or are married, especially mm-hmm. for women. Oh, absolutely. I have no idea why that is so, but yeah. do you feel that way? I know of people that are still single at 35, as in they're not married, but they're in committed relationships. Uh And then people kind of question like, why is she still not married? Mm. Even though she's already in a committed relationship. Mm. But if a guy is single at 35, they're like, oh, bachelor, bachelor. You know what I mean? It's not even a consideration for them. How is it so unfair? Okay, Uh, so I have a friend. Her sister is in a relationship, but both of them decided to not get married. So okay. the guy has yeah. a property of his own, and only recently, um, she bought a property of her own. It was $3 million, uh, mind you. She paid for the down payment herself. Wow. She did not get the help of the guy at all. Wow. That's how established and successful she is. But wow. she does not give a damn about getting married. She does not want to have kids. And thankfully for her, her parents are okay with it. So she really does not care about what society expects of her. I love that. Right. You shouldn't, in mm. fact. Yeah. But honestly, how many people can do it? Mm, I think for some people, it's not a choice. For example, um, you know the whole thing about getting a BTO, right. where you have to be married. If not, you have to wait till you're 35 mm. and apply under like the single scheme and stuff. Um, and, and at that point of time, you're probably left with less alternatives and you still need to wait longer for that. Mm. Yeah. So a lot of these things... Um, do come into play when people decide to get married. Mm. Um, I think um, it's really out of their hands. Correct. Have you heard of the hostel-like public rental models? I actually have not. Right. This Wait, is uh, what, what is this? Um, this is relatively new to me as well. So okay. basically, for singles out there who perhaps you know um, don't want to wait till thirty five or they can cannot afford an apartment of their own, yeah. they can choose to get this um hostel-like public rental models. So. There's gendered floors, so like all the men on one floor, all the oh, women on one floor. Oh, wow. And then there are also CCTV cameras placed all over for okay. security purposes. So basically, you get your own room, you have a single bed, you have your wardrobe okay. and stuff like that. But other facilities are shared. For oh. example, toilets. So this is why it's like a hostel-like public rental mm. model. So definitely, it's a lot cheaper than BTO, a yeah. lot more accessible. But at the same time, you are sharing a lot of facilities lah. Yeah, right, it's like staying right. in a school dorm mm. where you do have some privacy but it's still not fully your own space. Correct. Yeah. So people have said that this new single room shared facilities initiative helps to provide more people with a roof over their heads mm-hmm. while granting them more privacy. Mm. Except for the part where you have to share toilets. Yeah. Okay. Do single people or do married people have it tougher in Singapore? Wow. That's a big question. I feel like the overall 
direction of Singapore is more family centric. Mm -hmm. Like the government is always pushing for you know people to get married. That's why we have so many policies like the BTO. We have so many grants yeah. for children, for working adults, you know, who are parents and stuff. But that's it. With the rising cost, singles also actually get to save more. Yes, that because is true. You have less expenses, right? But overall, I personally feel that singles are still at a disadvantage As compared to, to married couples. Married couples. What about what do you think? unmarried, you know, unmarried singles who happen to be mothers? I know that a lot of them um, they're kind of like left out of legislation because there, there's actually this thing called the Working Mother's Child Relief. Ah. And it was actually, you know, they pay you, they give you a sum, it's like a, a grant, a sort of subsidy, subsidy based on your percentage of earned income. So if you are a working mother and you don't earn that much, oh. you get very little subsidy. But, but they have changed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so from 2025, it, instead of it being a percentage, it's now a fixed sum. So it doesn't matter how much you earn, which I think is way more fair because some people just don't have the time to work that much Correct. or just don't happen to have a job that pays them that much. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair that they receive only a small percentage of their income. Okay, so yeah. now it's no longer a small percentage but a fixed income. A fixed sum. This is more yes. fair for the lower income bracket. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's up to $12,000 actually, oh. depending on the number of children um, that you have. And this is only for working mothers who are married, uh, divorced or widowed. Ah, yeah. okay. In other words, only a woman who has her marriage recognised in Singapore yeah. and has maintained a child who is a Singapore citizen mm. qualifies for this tax relief. But if you had a child and you were never married, never divorced, never widowed, you don't apply for this. <gasps> you get what I mean? Oh. Yeah, what, what's, what's to say that those people don't need relief or don't need the subsidy or aid? Oh. Yeah, so I do think that there are certain, you know, groups of people that we're still missing out on mm. that, yeah, we should take a closer look at. But overall, yes, you know, being single um, comes with its pros and cons. Being mm. married, being attached comes with its own, you know, set of um, struggles as well. Um, what matters is that you are happy. Correct. Yeah. So was there any point in your life where you question if romantic relationships are for you? Well, I I, I like being in a relationship mm. because I like, um, how do you say, I like being there for someone. I like doing things for someone. You know, I like, I, I think my love language is like acts of service or something. Oh. I like like arranging things for you, doing things for you. Like, like you know, if your back hurts, like I give you a massage. Like things like that, acts of service. And I feel like it's a bit weird to do that for your friends, even though, you, yes, you can. But it's You nice. can do that for me. Oh, okay. My yeah. back hurts. Very painful. Okay. <laughs> I'm impressed. Mm, but that's why I like being in a relationship. Mm. But after being single, I appreciated the fact that I learned how to be on my own. Mm -hmm. And I know that if anything happens, touch wood, I can be on my own, mm. which is important. Understand. Yeah. For me, I feel like there isn't a point in my life where I question if romantic relationships are for me. So you always thought it was? Correct. Okay. Maybe because I grew up in um, a loving family. You know, mm. my, my, my parents, they work very hard to provide for us. And I feel like it's nice to have children to look after you. Of course, I'm not expecting my children to yeah. in the future. But it's nice to take care of them growing up, watch how cute they are, you know, play with them. Mm. I enjoy this kind of like genuine quality time with family. So that is basically mm. your vision for life. Correct. Right? I want to get married. Yeah. I want to give birth to two to three cute babies. Wow. <laughs> okay, waiting for your cute you. babies. Wow. Um, some of our listeners actually said that singlehood is not for them um, because mm -hmm. HTTPS.ju says, I can't be by myself for a long period of time. I need someone to hold and to call mine. Aww. So cute, right? Yeah. Ryan actually says, I frequently have thoughts of building a future with a partner. So therefore, singlehood is not for me. Mm. Mm. Even if they haven't found the one at the time, they're confident that they will find the one to build a future with. Correct. They know where they're going. Correct. Mm. Random Circle says, when I see couples happy, it makes me feel kind of lonely and sad. Mm. So I mean, that I, I, get, I get that. You know, sometimes like, especially... When it's a big like romantic occasion, things like Valentine's Day, when yeah. you're single, um, just don't go out because you'll see <laughs> things that maybe will upset you. Yeah, mm. Especially if you're single, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. But like I mentioned just now, being alone doesn't mean that you are lonely. Even though you're alone as in single, you have a great support group of family, friends, people around that are never going to change 
But you can also be alone and lonely as in you're single and you decide to mm. isolate yourself from the world. Mm. So if you find yourself doing that, maybe it's time to come out of Correct. your shell a bit more. Because you know what? Social scientists have found that those who do live alone tend to be actively involved in the lives of their cities and neighbourhoods. Yeah. So they're not just staying home. They actually walk out the door and meet other people. Talk to their neighbours, you know, um, join some communities. Yeah, talk to the plants. <laughs> yeah. hey, I legit have neighbours who do that. Talk to the plants? Not talk to the plants, but oh. they really turn the whole corridor into yeah. like a garden. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then oh, this, as in it's a community garden kind of uh, thing? So he has one garden of his own uh-huh. and then he joined the community garden downstairs. Oh, so cute. Yeah, so he has two gardens. Okay. Okay, and then okay. this is like new topic, right? People yeah. who come together, the uncle and the aunties, yeah. like, you know, talking about the plants that they, they, they grow together. And they're so cute, lah, honestly. Yeah. I do think being single forces you out of your shell a bit more. A bit. Uh, because... Mm. I mean, if you're going to just sit at home, not really, right? So you go out and you try and meet people. Mm. You try and, yeah, I guess... Plants, grow some plants. Grow some plants yeah. with the <laughs> next door and stuff like that. Okay, so with that, if you're listening to us and if you're single but ready to mingle, hey. I have the best plan for you. Yes, that's right. Um, You might have heard about Clarity's <laughs> series. It's called Matched, okay? And that is where they try and find you uh, somebody... It's like Love Island, but... yeah. But not so brutal, lah, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. And our team actually takes effort to find out what kind of a person you are mm. and what kind of a person would actually suit you. Yes, so Clarity's Matched is what you can consider, you know, joining if you are ready to mingle. And you think you've got, like, a great personality. Yes. Ooh, yes. Oh, okay. We want you. We'll put the link in the description box so you can just click on it anytime <laughs> yeah. and consider, okay? So I think, you know, just a final word. We, we always say this and it's a running theme, right? It's just be happy. Whether you're single, you're not single, don't let other people's expectations of how you should live your life make you be unhappy, right? Mm. If you are happier being by yourself and, you know, you feel more fulfilled that way, I think just trust your heart. Correct. I want to quote our PDF again. Oh. A romantic relationship is a luxury, but it's not a necessity. Oh. So with that in mind, I hope you find your happiness one day. Yeah, expensive luxury. Yeah, expensive but luxury Broke. good. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Cleverty's Hush Podcast. I'm Hazel. I'm Jermaine. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at itscleverty.co. And you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Me Listen, and we're on YouTube as well. And turn on the notification to know when a new episode is out. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you next time with Azura. Bye! Oh, shit. Re- oh. Reno Nathan. <laughs> I read it as Reno Nathan. What is his name? Red. <laughs> <laughs> this fella! <laughs> Reno Nathan. <laughs> Reno Nathan. I'm Hazel. I'm Jermaine. Don't Ma- forget to... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay.